Very good evening to all the respected senior members of uh, IMA Forum and dear friends. I feel very privileged to be here amidst all of you because uh, seeing the activity of the IMA Forum I am really inspired. I grew up in Forum now I live in a different place, but I initially joined the station and then I was now feeling so attached with the uh, IMA Forum but maybe I should change my commission. So thank you, sir. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to the dear president, uh, Dr. Chandrasekhar, the senior uh, doctor. My confidence. Yes. So, I thank uh, the IMA uh, for giving us the opportunity and the, our Apollo team for helping us be here today. So, I am going to talk more about robotic surgery and uh, a little bit about how robotic surgery has come to work for gastrointestinal surgery. Robotic surgery is one field which has been developed with a lot of passion. We all know what laparoscopic surgery has done to abdominal surgery. From the era where everything would have been open surgery, laparoscopy has changed completely to a minimal access. But then laparoscopic has reached a certain plateau wherein some of the advanced procedures like pancreatic surgery, liver surgeries, and surgeries in a very limited space like uh, pelvic surgery have not been able to progress beyond a certain limit. And more so because uh, the learning curve is also a little higher with laparoscopic surgery. And there comes the role of the advanced technology, namely robotic surgery. So, we all know that the innovations of uh, this century are mainly with uh, the internet, what it has done for our everyday lives, the mobile revolution that has completely changed the way we have been looking up for knowledge, looking up for uh, everyday activities. The social media and the impact on our lives and I would say definitely artificial intelligence has changed a lot of uh, things in our life with both the manufacturing sector and the service sector. We all know um, cars are produced, a lot of uh, things are produced there, it is all automated with machines. It is not just taking away jobs from people, it is a wrong uh, notion but then it is actually improved the quality of production and improved the uh, quantity also and then more importantly, robotics has also played an important role in the service sector. We all know medical services is one important thing, but then even in the uh, removal of landmines in the uh, areas where there is all like uh, terrorist regions, robotics has played a bigger role. So, has, can anybody uh, tell me who this person is? So, yeah. <laughs> so, this is Leonardo da Vinci. So, we all know Leonardo da Vinci because of Mona Lisa and painting is hanging there. But then, this is one of his paintings which showed the future of uh, humanity where there would be robotics which will come in to help humans. And so very rightly, the robotic uh, instrument that has been developed now has been called Da Vinci robot. No, even the other generations of robots which are developed, the first robot that was called Zeus, Zeus is the son of God. Then uh, came Aesop, then the latest one is called Puma. So it, I think robotic surgery is a field that is developed with a lot of passion and uh, in the future it is going to play an even greater role, in, especially in the medical sector. So this is the Royce XI robot, uh, Dr. Venkat has been very clearly demonstrating a lot of things. The, First thing is the uh, patient side card with the four robotic arms. This is the vision card with uh, the instruments and the uh, monitor. And this is the surgeon's console where the uh, instruments are being handled by the surgeon. So the trend in the robotic surgery is that it has been increasing the world over. Um, by the analyst, it is shown that um, the number of robotic procedures being done has improved 68% consistently from 2013 to 17, and uh, rightly so, the surgeries in difficult regions, especially the pelvis, with the urological and gynecological procedures taking the lead. 80% uh, of all prostatectomies are being done in the US by the robotic group, and also 80% of um, uh, hysterectomies for malignant uh, diseases are being done by the robotic group. And colorectal is picking up, but um, still a lot of surgeons who have been trained in the lab are very comfortable with it and yet to switch over to a robot. So, yeah, I'm the futurist with uh, other gastrointestinal surgery, cardiac surgery, neurosurgery and orthopedics. While coming, I saw SLM hospital having a huge banner of uh, robotic uh, knee replacement surgery. I think 
every surgery is going to be more frequently done by robotic surgery. And what are the advantages? We are all talking about uh, surgery in difficult cases, better outcome, but there is much more to a robotic surgery than just only this. First is, yes, it is a minimally invasive group. It avoids large incisions, it avoids prolonged recovery, it reduces the blood loss. All these advantages are inherent. But it is a partially unmanned surgery because with laparoscopic surgery, you need a very good assistant, a camera surgeon, and uh, a lot of your visualization is going to be dependent on that. Whereas with the robotic surgery, the camera, and all, most of the instruments are going to be under the control of the um, surgeon himself, and hence the efficiency of the surgeon is going to be much, much more than just laparoscopic surgery. And the position of the surgery, the instruments that are used are 8 mm size, but when you can see uh, how the instruments are visualized, you can see that they are magnified very well, and we have not just a two dimension, we have a three dimensional view at the surgeon's console, which helps uh, the surgeon do the surgery very precisely. And the movement of the instruments that are used, there are seven degrees of movement, much more than what even a human hand can do at that place. And it has uh, software for controlling the tremors and hence improving the uh, accuracy of the surgery. And there are definitely uh, better instruments that are coming up in robotics, which will help every surgery. And there is a very important thing in robot called the simulator. So simulator has exercises for training the surgeon. And I think there will be much more software that will be added later, wherein you can actually do the surgery if you have a uh, liver tumor. You can feed all the uh, imaging data into the lab and robot and you can reconstruct the liver that how it will be and you can actually perform the surgery before even doing the actual surgery. And hence, both for training new surgeons and for surgeons who want to plan very complicated procedures, the robot is going to be very helpful. And interop navigation. So, the robot has a very good modality to combine Intraoperative ultrasound, intraoperative uh, ICG, endocyanin cream, uh, which can be used for uh, identification of tumors, which can be used for identification of delirium anatomy, which can be used for identification of the ureter, and all these things are going to help the surgeon in a better way to perform the surgery. And as you all know, laparoscope can, can sometimes be very tiring, very difficult angles, and very difficult positions, fighting between instruments and other surgeons, but robot gives the best ergonomic position for the surgeon where he is comfort, seated comfortably in the surgeon's console and operating in the best position possible. And the clinical outcome with more uh, studies that are coming definitely have proven that robotic surgery has improved clinical outcomes in all the parameters that we can see. And one other thing that I think will be better telecommunication improvement will be a remote surgery. Already I think there are some uh, animal experiments in China and other places where a surgeon sitting 50 kilometers away and uh, all his uh, uh, movements of the surgeon console are passing through a 5G network and the surgery is actually effectively done on a laboratory animal. But I think that uh, in the future this may be possible which will definitely be for the benefit of the patient. And apart from that I also feel that uh, we have so much of workshops in medical conferences. The surgeon comes from some other place operates in the conference, but then he has a completely different setting where he does not know who the assistant is, what kind of instruments they are, but robotic is going to actually uniform out all these differences. Wherever the surgeon goes, he operates, it's going to be the same surgery for him, with him, most of it depending upon himself. So, like I said, minimally invasive, these are the bad stars that you all know. <laughs> minimally invasive just does not have give a better cosmetic outcome. It also avoids problems like uh, I deserve obstruction in the post-operative period, either in the short term or the long term. Incisional hernias have come out of very bad scars and wound healing. And you can see that you can patient going home with just a few both side scars and a small extraction scar for a major surgery like a low anterior section. And visuals, amazing in robotic, you should actually see it to believe it. Where these are 8 mm or 12 mm instruments, but you can see how magnified they are. They are actually seen in a three dimensional view, which actually helps the surgeon very much in performing the surgery very well. And like I said, instrumentation is exactly like a human hand. You cannot go and put your hand through a laparoscope inside the isolator, but then the robotic instrument does it for you. And in the same way, you will do it with your hand, or sometimes even better. Like I said, it has seven degrees of movement where it is not just flexion and extension and these things. It also can bend at the proximal levels leading up to higher degree of movement. And the kind of instrumentation available, there are 
tower scissors, there are blind tail scissors, sharp scissors, there are the bipolar forces. Every uh, instrument that is being developed uh, for robotic technique is very advanced and helps really precisely, very safely and effectively. And like I said, training. These are some of the models in the simulator. You know, we can sit hours together on the simulator, helping yourself to get proficient with the techniques of the board. And the best thing is, at the end of every simulation exercise, the robot gives you an accurate assessment of your skills. It will also tell you where you are lacking, where you have to improve, which you, whether your ergonomic movement is wrong, whether your force of on the tissue is wrong, um, whether how you are handling the instruments, whether you are colliding with your own instruments too much. All these an analytics of your uh, own training process is very good with the robotics, and I think it will help the surgical surgeons and the surgery better. So you, you can even reconstruct, like I said, you want to do a vascular surgery, I think there will be a time when you can actually uh, load the whole of the patient's data into the robot where it will reconstruct the surgery for yourself and do it actually you know, before actually doing the real surgery. And for training, it is a proper shape. So in uh, robot, you can actually have an assistant console along with the main surgery console where the Proctor, who is actually helping you train the procedure, can be completely throughout the procedure with you. And at any step where he feels that you need some guidance or you need some help, he can actually take over from you and perform it safely. This, I think, is a major step for surgeons who want to do minimally invasive surgery, wherein the learning curve will be very short. For example, in a laparoscopic vehicle, the best outcomes are there after 40 surgeries. Whereas for robotic surgery, we know that the learning curve is achieved within 20 surgeries. How is it possible? It is all because of this technology. And like I said, interoperative navigation. The robot has an integrated window for the ultrasound. Even when you don't feel a tactile feedback on a tumor or a blood vessel lying very close to the portion where you are operating, if you combine the interoperative ultrasound, it will give you all the data and it will be much safer. And you can include the endocyanin green where you inject the endocyanin green. With the inverted image, you can show actually where the lesions are. Whereas you would see in a normal image, you are not seeing the tumor. With the integrated uh, ICG image onto the uh, surgical picture, you will have a better visualization of the whole thing. And ergonomics, like I said, the surgeon sitting very comfortably with an optimal hand eye alignment and immersive 3D viewing and a very comfortable sitting posture. Yeah, like I said, the motion scaling is also very good and the tremor reduction is something that is very advantages. And cost, like I said, definitely the cost of uh, installing a robot is very high. The equipment cost ranges from, at present, from 15 crore rupees. The maintenance would be around 1 to 2 crore per every year. And the cost plus procedure, in the interoperative cost alone would be around 80,000 to 1 lakh more for every single procedure. But then when you balance it out, it becomes actually cost effective. When you have a um, center where you can do at least 200 to 300 robotic operations, and the surgeon is so well trained that he can do it in uh, acceptable time and uh, things, then the effectiveness of the procedure with lesser blood loss, lesser complications, lesser hospital stay will definitely make the benefits more than actually the cost making the whole of robotic surgery cost effective. And there are so many innovations that we ourselves are doing in our own country. We don't use a fourth arm and several surgeries, which actually cuts down 30-40 thousand know, rupees from the whole cost. And hence, we actually save money. A lot of things like this. And training facility is actually that is a con of uh, robotic surgery in India. We don't have so many training centers still. There's just one training and certifying center for all of the country. And uh, we actually train only one surgeon per day. They will not take more. Uh, the, the curriculum is very well strict. The company has developed over a 20 year curriculum. And uh, the number of surgeons trained, as you can see, only in the US is so more, much, but then out of the US is still the scope for improvement. And errors with the robotic system, commonly we think of the tactile feedback. Whereas, because if you handle with the robot, which is distant to it, you don't get the amount of uh, tension that you are giving on the tissue, uh, or you don't feel which kind of tissue, whether it is a hard tissue or soft tissue, that is not there. But then, with experience, you actually get good visual cues to understand all these uh, drawbacks and uh, adapt yourself to this technique. And there is also a doubt of whether the robot can have automatic movement. But then, there are no reports like this. You can, you can have a car and you can have a doubt that it can run fast without anything, but it does not happen. It is like that. So this complication is also 
without any cases. So I have a few slides about what robotic surgery has done in uh, gastrointestinal surgery. So first and foremost would be colorectal surgery. And like I said, it is very useful in surgery with uh, limited space and uh, operating in pelvis, the rectal surgery has shown a very prom good promise. Low and ultra low LAR for cancer, a very successful procedure. Uh, also for uh, polyposis and inflammatory bowel disease, use of colectomy can be very effectively done with the robot. Or for a left uh, hemicolectomy, lower and right hemicolectomy for cancer or diabetes, it is very useful. There are several studies, I will just go to one study which has definitely, uh, is a review article from 2016 which looked at a larger experience and showed that the colorectal surgery has a big role to play. You can see the visualization, you know, there is completely not a drop of blood in the field. This is the posterior uh, dissection of the rectum, the anterior dissection of the rectum, now almost going up to the pelvic floor. So these are the kind of images and the quality that you get. And surgery with the abdominal wall and pelvic floor, the ventral hernia and inguinal hernia. So there are surgeons have been very comfortable doing uh, inguinal hernia and ventral hernia surgery by laparoscopy. But then robotic, how is it going to help? Because you will not need the metal tags or the absorbable tags. You can just suture them very comfortably uh, using a robot and hence it is going to be very useful and more and more surgeries are going to be done in the future. This is the ventral hernia surgery and the inguinal hernia. And with isologogastric surgeries, the transthoracic isologogastric for cancer, we recently did a few cases where uh, we comfortably used, we previously we have done laparoscopic surgery, but then uh, using robotic for the thoracic cavity is completely different approach there. Definitely the chances of injuring the as was being thoracic gut will all come down and hence definitely it will improve the outcome of the surgery. Even bariatric procedures will uh, be very uh, good indication and gastrectomy for cancer with the lymph node dissection from all regions, even the infrared and lymph nodes, the retrofit and bone, all of them are very well dissected by the body technique. So the isovagic can be done in a prone position, like you see, instead of a large thoracic incision, you just put three pores and one assistant pore, and you can dissect the isovagus so well. What are the benefits? Like I said, oncologically superior to advanced ideal isovagic, where we have no idea of what group of lymph nodes we are dissecting. It is very feasible and safe. You know, once you do a transverse procedure, you will never go back to a transverse procedure. Because uh, as it was brain, all these things can bleed so badly in the transverse approach, which are never in transverse approach. And uh, it reduces the pulmonary complications and injury to the vital structures like thoracic impact and as was brain. This study from uh, Japan showed that isobagus and the anatomical feature of it make it an ideal organ for robotic surgery. And as medicine, so pancreatic surgery is one of the very difficult surgeries in the gastrointestinal system and all major surgeries of the pancreas including pancreatic pancreatectomy, distal pancreatectomy, central pancreatectomy and even for pancreatic uh, acute and chronic pancreatic including cystogastrostomy, pancreatic digestomy can be done by the robotic group. These are some of the images with the local operation uh, where you can see that all these structures are in the patient and just rushing through. This is the anastomosis part where the Pancreatic genostomy is done with this time. Suturing is very comfortable with the robot. And this is a crystal pancreatectomy wherein the distal part of the pancreas is removed. This is a cystogastrostomy wherein through the anterior wall, posterior wall of the stomach, the cyst is opened and necrosis is removed well and very effectively. Ideally, you should keep one or two minutes first. Question, yes, yes. Right? Okay, yeah. I am finishing. So, yeah. hepatectomy, it can also be done very well. So, the conclusion is that. Future definitely it is a fast growing innovation. There are proven clinical outcomes in gastrointestinal surgery, cost effective in the long term, and it will be more widely available because the cost of robotic is going to come down drastically. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.